Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today I would like to talk about Schur's orthogonality relations, which is really, really nice, really, really cute. We have kind of seen them in a previous video, but they're really so important and really, really useful in practice. We'll see um, that it's definitely worthwhile to spend an own video in it, on it. And basically the idea is that uh, simple characters will form an orthonormal basis. So. Um, there's some inner product and they are, well, orthonormal, so not just also orthogonal, but also, um, well, of length one in this basis, uh, or sorry, in this inner product. Uh, so let's have a look. So remember that I, well, if you have seen previous videos, of course, otherwise you can't remember. Um, but anyway, I like to play with uh, magma a lot when it comes to simple characters, the character tables, uh, link is in the description. Um, but you can run something like this and it's pretty powerful and it gives you the simple characters in this case of the symmetric group S3. So there are three simple characters. They are denoted by, well, chi1, chi2, chi3. Um, apparently it's easier to denote them by x1, x2, 2, x3 in uh, magma code. But anyway, there are three of them. Um, unless you are in a funny characteristic, but I'm going to ignore funny characteristics anyway, at least for now. And I always work over C here. So there are three simple characters, the trivial one, uh, which is just uh, one on all conjugacy classes. So here are the conjugacy classes of order one. That's a trivial conjugacy class of order three. That's where the reflection sit and of, of order two, that's the rest. <laughs> so there's three conjugacy classes and three simple characters. Uh, first one is a trivial one. It takes value one on all conjugacy classes. Then there's a sign character, which takes a few minus signs um, for example, on, on this conjugacy class of order three, as you can see here. And then there's standard representation of uh, dimension two. Remember that you can read off the dimension in the first, uh, what is it, column, because the first column is a conjugacy class of the identity element, and the identity element acts by the identity matrix, and it's just a trace of the identity matrix, so uh, the dimension of the space. Anyway, so there are three of those, uh, well, simple characters. And if you play around with it a little bit, you will come maybe at least uh, come to the following definition. So you can define an inner product on those characters by the following formula. So the inner product of, uh, well, those two characters here, we will do that in a, an example in a second, is exactly what you think it should be. It's a sum over all group elements and then the product of uh, the corresponding values of the characters, which should look very familiar, like in functional analysis or whatever. You sometimes you have an integral because it's infinite instead of finite, but basically it's the same idea. So, um, so fg, the inner product dx um, integral is really just the same. Then the S is normalization factor, one over g. We'll see in a second why we need that. And because you work with the complex numbers, well, you really need to co complex conjugate one of them. It's not super important. It won't show up in those examples here because I <laughs> have really boring complex numbers in some sense, but inner products on complex numbers always want to uh, have some context complex conjugation somewhere. And anyway, so this is a formula. Inner product of uh, two characters is defined by just the sum over all values, the sum of the product of all values over the whole group. So let's do an example here. So let's say you want to pair the trivial character with itself. So what would you need to do? You just need to look at those numbers and multiply them with itself. So it's one times uh, plus, sorry, one times one is one, plus one times one is one, plus one times one is one. And then comes the slightly confusing part because you need to weight everything over the uh, size of the conjugacy clause. So this appears once, this appears three times, this appears two times. And in the end you have one times one, three times one, two times one. So in total you get six as, as the inner product. And well, you divide by the order of the group. So you get one as the inner product. And exactly this normalization is, well, you want to <laughs> kind of uh, normalize everything so that those guys have order one, size one. Another example would be, let's do the last one. So you write two times two, which is four. So two times two, uh, zero times zero is a bit boring, but anyway, zero times zero. And the last one is a minus one times minus one, which is of course one. And you weight everything again over the conjugacy classes, one, three, two, and you get four. Well, this is of course zero. 
and you have minus one times minus one is one. Two times, you get two again, you get six. And remember, you get rid of the order of the group. So actually, you get one. My final example is, let's say you want to pair those two together. So what you would do is you have one times two, one times two, you have one times zero, that's a bit boring again, one times zero, you have one times minus one, one times minus one, and you get weight with the orders, the so one, three, two, so you get two here, uh, you get of course zero here, you get minus one times two, minus two, and they add up to zero. So you get this funny result, which is kind of cool, that this inner product here um, it's kind of ortho orthonormal. That's kind of, kind of the point, right? So if you pair a character with itself, you get one. If you pair a character with another one, you get zero. It's already a pretty good, cool start. But it gets even better. So this is pretty cool, but it actually gets even better. So let's have a look at a non-simple representation. So um, my character table was only for the simple ones, for the simple uh, characters. And now we have a non-simple one. Um, whatever. So here's the construction of this one. Uh, so you can, for example, act on a three-fold tensor product of a two-dimensional space. This is, of course, an eight-dimensional representation, two times two times two, and you just permute the entries. So, for example, this permutation here, which just permutes one and two, we just permute those two entries here and keeps the last one fixed. Um, this permutation would permute, well, will put the first at third position and so on. And in this case, at least for, for one vector, you get the same result as above, right? So here... It's, it's slightly permuted, but it's you kind of get the uh, same result up to colors. So I used colors to distinguish which one starts where. So green starts in the first slot and it goes to the second slot. Here, green starts in the first slot and goes in the last slot. But the vector itself, in this case, is exactly the same. One, two, one, two, one, 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 two, one, two, one, one. But you have eight vectors to test them on and you get, well, six eight by eight matrices. It's quite a big representation. Well, well, eight is not maybe huge, but it's definitely too huge for a slide. So it's a, a well, six eight by eight matrices. And I've computed the character. Um, you could do that if you want. Pause the video, do it yourself. It's not so hard. Well, <laughs> up to the fact that these are eight by eight matrices. So here's the character of this representation on the three conjugacy classes. As I said, it's of dimension eight. So um, the first one is eight, and then we have four and two. Okay, and if you compute the pairing, which is a bit trickier now, it's not really tricky, but the numbers are a bit bigger, so I probably will mess it up. So I did that, character is 20. What you need to do is you need to do eight times eight, you need to do four times four, you need to do two times two, and then you need to weight everything uh, with the order. So here's one, here's three, here's two, and multiply everything together and take sums. And I hope <laughs> I have done the calculation correct and you get 120 in the end. Uh, double check, my calculation skills are not really good. And obviously I still did that. Oh, I did that with a machine <laughs> because I really can't calculate with numbers. Anyway, you get rid of a factor six here because you divide by the order of the group and you get 20, which is not one, right? So it's not one as before. And this is a not simple representation. And as we will see in two slides, this is an if and only if. So the pairing spits out one for simple representations and Everything else, basically, for whatever you see, anything else, it's not simple. That's kind of the right way to say it. And it's actually even better. So, um, so this huge representation, well, mildly huge, too huge for my slide representation, uh, the eight by eight, uh, eight by eight matrices, the six of them. You would like to decompose them into the simple ones because the simple ones are the elements, and you would need to find a huge base change matrix for those six by six matrices, and that sounds very painful. But the magic here is that you can just use the characters and it's a really simple calculation if you want to decompose uh, this one into sums of those. And this is how it works. You again, just use the pairing. You pair this one with all of them. Uh, let me do one of them as an example. So let me do the first one. So you should do eight times one, four times one, uh, two times one. And you should again wait with the multiplicities or the order of the uh, conjugacy classes, so, and then take some over everything. And if I'm not miscalculating, you get eight, uh, 12, and four, you get 24. Uh, you divide by the order of the group. As usual, you get four. Yep, that's what's my calculation from before as well. And that this pairing is really easy calculation, right? Just compare numbers in the table, multiply them together, just a pairing. Um, and that this number is four, 
tells you that the first representation appears four times in the decomposition. Uh, well, do the calculation. This one is zero, this one is two, so this one appears two times. And you get the decomposition as down here. So you can decompose the simple representation, the huge one with the eight by eight matrices, without ever calculating any matrix in some sense. You just need to know its character, you pair it to the um, character tables, and you get a desired decomposition, which is pretty cool. It's really one of those miracles of the theory that you really don't need to care about huge matrices, but it's just a computation with numbers and a not really hard one uh, in this case. So here's a summary. Um, kind of the formal statement is the simple characters form of the normal basis of class functions. And the class functions are just the ones to see that are co constant on conjugacy clauses with the inner product we've seen before. So kind of that's the statement. It's the basis of the space, and it's a very nice one. It's not just orthogonal, but it's also orthonormal. And you have this nice statement that a, a character, any character, pairs to one, even only if it's simple. So you can actually check whether a character is simple. And this actually implies the result we have seen several times by now. So if you look at this matrix here, it's always square. You always have the same number of um, conjugacy classes as, as you have simple uh, representations. And this just, it, it follows from this abstract result. So you would prove this abstract result before here, the one in green, and then you would, would get this result. And it's really, really good. So this is a really, really powerful statement. It's really, really good. So you can decompose characters as a, unknown characters in linear combinations. It gives you the decomposition. That's what I did um, on, on the other slide. And it, it's really, really powerful. It's really, really good. Uh, yeah, so let me finish by showing you this one here. You can actually complete the character table if you want. Um, using this, this theorem. So it's kind of this philosophy. So here's my character table again. It's again S3, really the same. OK, you might say now we know the character table, so why should I complete it? But let's just assume, for some reasons, we don't know the last representation. Kind of we can guess that there's a trivial representation. We can guess that there's a sign representation. But maybe the last one is not so completely trivial to guess. And then we can still fill it up by um, using the orthogonality relations. So the last character should be, uh, it should pair with itself. I just give it A, B, C here. Um, it should pair with itself to six, up to dividing by the order of the group. And it should pair with the other two characters to zero. And you solve this linear equation in A, B, C. And you get, uh, well, th th there's one with solution to zero minus one under the additional assumption that A, which is the dimension of the representation is actually a natural number. This is not a really efficient way to do it in general, but in, in principle it works. And it's kind of comparable to, so here's a, here's a periodic table, um, the old one due to Medelayev. And um, as you can see, there are some question marks here. So that's something that you can already guess the existence from the general theory. And it's kind of the same here. So you could think of here's the question mark. So the general theory tells you that there should be three, but maybe you have only found two of them. And then you could somehow guess and piece things together from the general theory to actually get some, uh, you can actually find the character. And it's really the same story here. If you could find kind of this element, <laughs> but you don't know what it is because you haven't seen it in the real world. So you could find this abstract character. You kind of know that it needs to exist, but it, you kind of still need to somehow <laughs> construct the actual representation. So it's really kind of the same story. Um, so orthogonality relations are pretty cool. It kind of uh, allows us to avoid doing calculations with huge matrices. Remember my eight by eight example? Well, that might not be a huge matrix, but at least to do it by hand is a bit painful. The calculation with the characters by hand, that, well, okay, <laughs> maybe it was also a bit painful because the numbers were eight times eight something. But anyway, it was definitely much easier. Uh, and it's just really so cute and powerful. Just use the pairing and you can decompose any unknown representation into symbols. You can find the simple representations without ever calculating with matrices. And that's really, really beautiful and the power of the whole story. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.